and welcome back to RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. I'm your host Mikey and in today's tutorial we are going to work on entrelac crochet together. In today's tutorial specifically we're going to go through some of the ins and outs on getting started with entrelac and then there will be another video on a step by step process in order for you to begin. Today's tutorial is specifically about going over some of the valuable information that you can find when it comes to entrelac crochet. How exactly is it working? I'm one of those kind of people I like to know why I'm sticking in my hook into certain stitches in order to be able to make this concept go. And when I was on the Crochet Crowd Cruises I had Diane and Barbara sit with me in order for me to finally understand the ins and outs when it came to entrelac crochet. So here are some of the tips that I learned from them and hopefully you'll find those of value as well. So let's begin. So step one today is do not be intimidated by instructions when it comes to entrelac crochet. A lot of words, simple concept. I have not been able to master um, entrelac crochet for the simple reason is that I struggle with so much instructions and then I get intimidated that I cannot do it. I have to say to you these instructions are written as if somebody was sitting beside you and giving you all the information that you need. Once I dissect it for you in the next video on showing you step by steps of entrelac you're going to realize that all of these instructions are what I'm about to show you but the concept is so simple. So step one. Don't let these fool you. It, the concept is actually really simple. Step two is really really simple and what I want you to visualize this as a square which it is a square and the reason why it's a square is that this is not like a typical afghan where we start off with the base of your afghan going in the full width. You can do it th that way but most of the patterns are doing it in the way that I'm showing you here. So for example I just I'm looking at this square right here. So let's pay attention to that square. That's all you see. So when we do the entrelac crochet we're going to do this small little square. But you'll notice that what is attaching to that square? It's the pink. So when we go to look at it the next level that we're going to do the entrelac is growing out from this middle square and then we're going to do all of our pinks next. So we do pink, 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 pink. Okay you see that? So we're working out from a center square working on to the next. So when we get all the pink done we're immediately going to go to the next level and all of a sudden you'll see green, 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 green and green and those are surrounding. So when you look at this particular project from a, a square element you will notice that each square is actually building on top of the other. When I th was thinking about entrelac crochet when I was a teenager I'm like I don't want to sew any of these squares together. You're not. You're crocheting these as if you were um, doing it all together at the same time. You were using the boxes and sides of boxes in order to build the next neighbor and without them you need to pay attention to that. So what we have to do is what happens if you do not have a neighboring box. So that's the next stop. When building onto entrelac you always have to look for the neighbor and you have to look for the imaginary L. And when you look for the imaginary L that's when you become really successful with entrelac. What you're going to notice is that every time you have a divot like this, okay, a V shape, this is an L. So if you have an L you are fabulous and this next one that you see right here there's going to be another one built exactly right on it. And so basically just like you see this is attaching here essentially we're going to be attaching here. So then this will be exposed like it like you see it here. So when we come across you'll notice that we're going to finish. We're going to bam 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 bam. You are going to be ending up here and so then you just immediately start off. So visualize entrelac like it's a stairway. So let me turn it like it's a stairway for you. And if you can visualize that what's happening is that you're working up, up the stairs. So essentially this next pink here there's going to be pink and you're going to work it all the way up going just like so. You're going to end up back here and so we immediately come in here and we work it. So just look at it as stairways and then if you can do that concept it's really easy. But what happens if you do not have an L? So for example we're going to be coming around here and we have to build up on this here but there's no L. And so when we go through the concept of showing you how to do entrelac you're going to notice that you have to create the imaginary L on yourself. So you're going to be doing a chaining and then you're going to work this one and then eventually you'll be back in here. So essentially that's what you have to do. So the other concept that they never explained to me while I was on the cruise ship is that I noticed myself I was going in different directions. When you look at this you'll notice that all of the grain work is in different ways. And so let me cover that in just a moment. 
So let's review the grains and you're gonna notice that the grains and I'm gonna call that the grains. These are the straight lines that you can see. You can see on this part of the afghan it's going in this direction. This part is going in this direction. This one is this one and then the other one is coming out. You will notice that this afghan will naturally divide into four pieces of pie and depending on which side of the pie you're working on the grains will change direction. So for example this is all relative to how you're attaching. So right over here we have all of our, our attaching and when we go to grab this next box we're gonna go bang, 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 bang. These are all the rows going up and when you do the rows going up the automatically these lines follow it. So for example because we're growing up on these sides of the particular afghan all of the grains are gonna match exactly what's underneath. So when the, the angle changes, so we're changing from this angle, we're then going to this angle when it comes to this. So all of these ones are gonna be going out just like so. So you'll notice that there's four pieces of pie and then each one of the pieces has its own direction when working around an afghan. Another piece of advice that I found helpful even for myself is that I figured out that when you're going around a central box, so we're gonna just say for example we're back into the center point again and we're growing it out, you are gonna notice that each one of the squares that you build onto the box beside it is that each attaching point is gonna be unique to itself meaning that there's n it's never gonna be two into one spot. It's always gonna be going up because essentially if you look at the grains, the grains should match each one as you go up and that's because we're attaching one after another going around. So even when we're going across, you will notice that each one is attaching onto its own and when you can understand that concept, it makes it so easy for you to be able to finalize off this project because essentially if you know that each one of these boxes is only attached to the neighbor in one section per line, you can make everything work really easily. Now Diane and Barbara were telling me that sometimes just in a fluke, sometimes you're not left with enough stitches and sometimes you have to flub a corner in order to, for, to make it work. They said it's a lot more simpler than, than going around the entire afghan only to realize that you've made a mistake that requires you to rip out uh, a whole entire round when in, in order to fix it. That sometimes you have to use your creative license and flub it as you go. Now when attaching your pieces. What are you gonna have on the back? I haven't done so. On the back of your entrelock it's gonna look like it's knitted because we're working on just one side and so if you like the knitting look this is gonna be quite ideal for you. You can see that I have not addressed all of my loose ends and I'm gonna use a darning needle at the end to be able to secure all of that in as I go. So I'm one of those people that I either do it at the time or I do it at the end of the project and because this is a sampler for me I decided to wait until the end. So another concept that you see with entrelac is that you see a lot of purses done with this kind of concept and how are they doing it? You're thinking to yourself there's two ways of getting a straight edge but sometimes people cheat the system. Well it's not really cheating, it's creative license. Is that you can fold up your one side and you can fold up the other side just like so and you will notice that the squares fit into each other just like it would be like a gearbox. And so this would be then a perfect way for achieving sides of a bag. So when you go to turn this over, when you attach it at a certain seam point is that you would appear to have a bag that's completely done just like so and you would have all nice edges just like this. There is also a way in order for you to have flat edges along the side and we're gonna cover that in the step by step tutorial as well if you want to achieve that look and then you can bring that together to be able to sew it as well. So that's an idea for being able to get concepts like bags and etc. done with entrelac. When it comes to entrelac crochet, what are you gonna use for a crochet hook? Now when it comes to these small ones, I have my famous um, comfort handle grip. You know, it's something that I need to use when I do crochet because I crochet a lot. I found that you only need seven stitches on your hook at one time and that a regular hook just like so will accommodate that. In actual fact, these comfort grips are perfect because then your fingers never get caught up into the stitches. They automatically stop at the gripping spot just like so. So it makes it very easy. However, you might want to do a different size entrelac which is this one here and this is the James C. Briott Chunky Marble and what I've done is that I've made my squares a lot bigger so I cannot get my entire concept onto these. So what I need to do is that I need to use a Tunisian hook where I start grabbing onto 
my boxes. So when I show you the concept of using a larger hook you're gonna understand why I'm using a bigger hook for this because in actual fact you have to have all of this onto your hook at one time and if you tried to do it with a smaller hook just like so it wouldn't work. So that's one of the other com common elements. What I have found with transitional yarn just like so you don't need to change the colors like you would with the checkerboard effect that just like you see here. In actual fact you because the colors are changing so slowly on the yarn ball that every square will look different and therefore will give you a quilting look. And I find with myself is that it doesn't really matter if I'm doing smaller squares or if I'm doing larger squares the same timing is going to take effect. It's just a completely different look and if you're looking for maybe a bedspread for like a quilting kind of idea when it comes to crochet this here because the squares are bigger are really quite cool and that's something. Now with entrelac crochet as well a concept that I did try is that I never tried changing the colors for one and I found with myself why? Why would I not want to change the colors? I found with myself if you're going to do the concept you must have just Tunisian the whole thing if you're not going to change the colors because there's no point to doing it. You are going to end up with a little bit of a raised effect with these squares but I find with the same color it really doesn't have the same effect as if you change the colors or you're using colored transitional yarn just like this. So just to prove my point I also have another sample where the squares are the regular size just like you saw in the small checker one just like here and what I've done is that I've used color transitional yarn. You can use any fabulous products by redheart.com in order to be able to make this kind of concept. You just have to make sure the yarn is really changing color exceptionally slowly. So just because I've done a larger sample with larger squares doesn't mean that this concept won't work with the small ones. In actual fact remember how I told you that we're going in a circle? If you follow the color transition you will actually see the coloring take effect as you're going all the way around. So this is a really great concept if you want to do color transitional yarn and have a project that really looks as cool as this one. So thank you for joining me today. This has been the ins and outs of Entrelac crochet and you can see that it's really very versatile. It's something that I'm extremely hooked on right now so this is something I'm going to be running with for a while. In the next tutorial series that we're going to have lined up for you is I'm going to show you the normal concept for the uh, regular sizing of Entrelac and of course because I'm doing this sample I'm going to show you the larger squares in order for you to achieve that as well. Both concepts are exactly identical. There's just a difference of stitch count in order to make it work for you. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. Thank you so much for joining me today and until then we'll see ya. Bye bye now. <laughs> That's me waving. We'll see ya.